Hey guys, first of all, wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hopefully, we'll have a better New Year this time without any pandemics or crisis. So this is one of the much awaited videos. So it's going to be the second video explaining how to install TensorFlow on Ubuntu with GPU support. I've already done the video for Windows. This video is done as part of my newly released book, TensorFlow in Action. In TensorFlow in Action, you'll learn all about TensorFlow 2, how to use it for implementing deep neural networks, as well as how to deploy models using TensorFlow. It's done with Manning and and make sure you check out this book. Before we start, we're going to assume that Ubuntu 18.04 is installed on your computer and the latest NVIDIA drivers are installed. Don't worry if you don't have the latest NVIDIA drivers installed. You will be given the option to install this when you're installing CUDA. So in this guide, we will be installing Anaconda we will be creating a virtual environment in Anaconda to hold all the Python packages we need. We're going to install CUDA 10.1. We're going to install CUDA DNN 7.6.5. And we're going to, and most importantly, we're going to use TensorFlow 2.2. But you can easily use the same procedure with the correct CUDA versions and CUDA DNN versions for any other TensorFlow, as long as you make sure the CUDA and CUDA DNN versions are compatible with TensorFlow version you're using. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is install Anaconda. So to do that, open your web browser and then type download Anaconda. Then go to the anaconda.com link that is provided and there you will be shown a download button. Click on the download button and you will be taken into a part of the page where you could download the particular Anaconda distribution you are interested in. So we're going to go with the 64-bit Linux installer. Then click save. And then once the download is complete, you should see the file downloaded into your download directory. So here you can see the Anaconda 3 file that is downloaded, which is a shell script. So it's an installer. And to run this installer, all you have to do is go to your download directory. And then just run the shell script. Type dot backslash and the Anaconda shell script. When you press enter, you will be shown the agreement for Anaconda to go through that. And then if you accept, click accept. And then you will be provided a bunch of options to specify the installation location. I'm just going to leave it at default, which is the home directory. So an Anaconda tree directory will be created in my home directory, which will contain all the installed files. And then Anaconda is going to install its default packages. And then you will be asked another question. Just leave it at default. We don't want our installer to initialize Conda. So you're going to leave it at that. And now we are done. So we have a working Anaconda installation installed. You can check the validity of our installation by first sourcing the Conda activate file. So in Anaconda, you will see an activate file. When you source that file, your Anaconda environment is activated. Then you can type Conda dash dash version to check the Anaconda version. If Anaconda is installed properly, you will see an Anaconda version popping up in your terminal. There's also an, another important step you should perform. Instead of sourcing the Anaconda activate file every time you open up a terminal, you can, you can let that happen automatically when you open the terminal through the default bash script. So you just need to include a step in your .bashrc file, which is found in your home directory. So we're going to use the vim editor to edit this file, and that will show you the bashrc script. And in that, at the end of the file, include a line that says source and the path to your activate file found in the Anaconda installation path. Next time you open up terminal, it 
it will automatically run this sourcing and you will have the Anaconda environment already activated. Next, we're going to create a virtual environment in Anaconda to install all the packages we need, such as TensorFlow. We're going to name this virtual environment as manning.tf2 and then make sure you specify the Python version you want. Otherwise, it's going to go with the default Python version, which is probably 3.9, but we want 3.6. So make sure you provide the argument Python equals 3.6. And once the installation is successful, you will be given how to activate it and how to deactivate it. So let's activate our environment. So we're going to type conda activate manning tf.2. Once it's activated, you should see this manning.tf2 within parentheses before your terminal prompt. Now we, have, now we can finally install all the packages we need in this environment. To do that, just go into your code directory, which can be downloaded using the link provided in the description and then go into that directory and use pip install dash r requirements.txt. The requirements.txt contains all the libraries we need along with their versions. Once the installation of all the packages we need is successful, we can quickly check whether these packages are installed properly. To do that, open up a Python 3 terminal by typing Python 3 and pressing enter and then import numpy as np, import pandas as pd, import tensorflow as tf. All of these commands should run successfully without any errors. Even though we were able to import tensorflow without any errors, it only can perform computations on the CPU because we still haven't installed CUDA and CUDA DNN. All right, now we can download CUDA 10.1. To do that, just type CUDA 10.1 download on your web browser and go to the first link. This link should take you to developer.nvidia.com. In that, you have to select several options, such as the operating system, the architecture, distribution. So if you have Ubuntu 18 installed, you can select the options I have selected here. And then you click the download. So I'm gonna go with the local installer and I'm just gonna click download. Once the download finishes, you should see this file appearing in your download folder. Now, make sure you're in your downloads directory. If not, just cd into it. Then make sure you have execution permission for your CUDA file. Here, the X means you have execution permission. To run the CUDA installation, type sudo dot slash and the file name of the CUDA download you just downloaded. Here in the installation, you will be asked whether you want to install the drivers or not. So remember that I said, if you don't have your NVIDIA drivers installed, it still should be fine. So now is the time to install it if you don't have it. I already have NVIDIA drivers installed in my computer. So I'm going to skip that installation and install everything else. Once the installation finishes, you will see this installation summary printed in the terminal. It will give you information about what was installed and then what variables, what environmental variables to set such as the path variable and the LD library path variable and how the installation went as well. Next, let's go into our CUDA installation directory and see what's in there. So you'd see folders like bin, lib, which are essential parts of your CUDA installation. And they're, they're actually there, so which is good. Next, we have an important step to perform. This is to set the path variable. You can see that from line 119 up to line 123, we have some logic which is setting the path variables. Here, if the path variable does not have a path involving CUDA, we're gonna append the CUDA path into our path variable. Then we are also going to set the LD library path variable to point at the CUDA installation. Just copy this, just copy this script into your bash RC. 
I have given you the link to a GitHub gist which has the code required for you to copy. Next up, installing CUDA DNN. Again, if you want to know more about the CUDA DNN, just have a look at the Windows installation guide. I'm going into more detail about what each of these components is doing in that video. To download CUDA DNN, just type CUDA DNN download. Then you will be taken into developer.nvidia.com website. In there, click download CUDA DNN, and then you will have to log in with your credentials. If you don't have an NVIDIA account, you will have to create one, and you will be taken onto the download page. Here, say you're agreeing to the terms and conditions, and you have to go and click on the archive CUDA DNN versions. Then go and select the 7.6.5 for CUDA 10.1 because there are multiple versions of 7.6.5 for different CUDA versions. You have to pick the one for 10.1. Then select the Linux installation version and click Save File. Once the download finishes, you should see this tar file appearing in your download directory. Then we're going to cd into our downloads directory and we're going to extract this tar file. To do that, you can just type tar-xzzf and the CUDA DNN file name. It will create a CUDA directory in your download folder and that will have the extracted files in it. Then all we have to do is just copy the files to corresponding locations in your CUDA installation. To do that, let's look at the installation guide for CUDA DNN. Just type install CUDA DNN and you will be taken into a documentation. In there, just scroll, just scroll down to the tar file installation section. We're just going to perform the, we, ha we have already performed the tar file extraction. We just need to copy the files now. So just copy and paste the lines I'm highlighting here. Paste that line on the terminal. And make sure you set the destination CUDA path properly. I have installed CUDA in the user local CUDA 10.1 location. So I have to change the path from CUDA to CUDA 10.1. The final line here is actually setting the permission. So it's not copying anything, it's just setting the permission, particularly the read permission, to read these files when um, CUDA is invoked by TensorFlow. Great, now you should be all set. You can check your CUDA installation by typing nvcc dash dash version. It should give you a quick summary of the CUDA installation you have on your computer. Now let's activate our virtual environment again and try to run a Jupyter notebook and see if TensorFlow can identify our GPU. So we have, all, we have activated our virtual environment. And next we're gonna go into our code repository which is located in my home directory code folder and then manning tf2 in action then type jupyter space notebook and then create a notebook using new python 3 import tensorflow print tensorflow version you should see version 2.2.1 which is exactly what we installed Then try tf.test.isGPU available. This is actually a deprecated function. 
So let's use the proper function, which is tf.config.list physical devices within brackets GPU. In my machine, I have a single GPU, so it shows a single, so it shows a list with a single element in it. All right, that's it. Just a reminder, if you're keen on learning TensorFlow 2 in all its APIs, how to implement deep neural networks with TensorFlow, as well as deploy models and other optimization techniques, make sure you check out TensorFlow 2 in action by Manny. So I hope this video was useful for you in terms of installing TensorFlow on Ubuntu. It's a very simple procedure if you follow the correct instructions. So hopefully see you guys soon with another video. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.